Hi everyone and welcome back to the Career Discovery Sessions. This week we're talking to Katerina Khadzimicheva Evans, the Executive Director of the European Centre for Not-for-Profit Law, otherwise known as ECNL. Well, thank you, Simona. It's really lovely to be part of this conversation. Thank you. So my name is uh, Katerina and I work for the European Centre for Non-Profit Law, as you said. And our organisation is one of the most renowned organisations in Europe which is specifically focusing on protecting our human rights to be able to come together to form an association or a charity or to go out on the street and protest, for example, of issues that matter to us as people, as citizens and individuals or groups. So, for example, issues such as the Black Lives Matter or the Extinction Rebellion or most recently the women's rights or even about like there is a law being adopted by the government who should say anything about it? Should people have a right to opinionate on it? How should the processes look like? So my role within my organization is to work with my team and try to find out how we can best protect these rights. And the other thing finally we are most recently looking at is for example, the technology and how the technology impacts our human rights to participate, to influence, to go out on the street and how can we protect ourselves, for example, from surveillance by states when they want to interfere with our rights. Mm -hmm. And how did you decide that this is the profession for you? Well, that's a very interesting question because I actually didn't decide necessarily. I think I grew uh, into this position and the position sort of found me. Okay. And I guess maybe this is why I'm a little bit more specific or different from some of the um, other speakers you had in these sessions. But uh, what really happened is that uh, I was, uh, when I was at the university in Macedonia, I was thinking whether I should be pursuing law or psychology. And I really was appealing by both elements because I love working with people and understanding behaviors. But in the same time, I was very focused on what the rules should be and how we can create justice in the society. So then I decided to pursue law. And after my studies, I did a master degree at the University of Cent the Central European University in Budapest on constitutional law and human rights. And within this study, we had a class which literally was teaching us about these issues, about not just human rights as such, but specifically your right to come together, specifically to your right to set up an organization, to pursue goals, um, to you know, fight for certain cause which you strongly believe in, and what should be the legal framework for it. And it really kind of inspired me to think differently about it and to look at this issue more specifically. So when they found uh, the, the professors and the university were coming from our partner organization called the International Center for Nonprofit Law, and when they offered the fellowship, I sort of jumped into it and I was like, I wanna know more about this. Like I didn't even realize that there is this specific human rights field which can be uh, quite intriguing. And I was always famous about uh, my um, strong stand on the rights to protest, even in my own house, within my own household, I was organizing campaigns and trying to pursue things for the better. So I was like, oh my God, I, what are my rights around this? You know, I wanna dive deeper. So after that fellowship, there was a job opening within the organization. So I decided to apply, I got it. And I started literally from an intern I grew up through this organization, through different legal positions to come today to be its director. So it's been a 20 years of journey with the same organization within this profession. And the reason I'm saying it found me also because through this process, there was a little in intriguing element which wanted me to explore more. But then by joining it, I realized there is much more there that one can learn and develop and grow. And this was the most passionate thing between me and my job you know, the ability to, the, the feeling that it will take me forward, that um, it will allow me to explore and at the same time, pursue the justice in the world I want to see and work within the charitable sector. And I think also human rights is such a long and difficult um, field that you can always keep working on it. Maybe that's something that keeps you passionate is what would you say keeps you motivated to keep working this job role? Well, I think the, the, the issue that I love about my job is that, um, so we work on changing the world through law, right? Creating better standards and protections that if you want to stand up for your rights, you can actually say, 
that there is this European Union standard or United Nations standard that guarantees you this right and your country has to respect that. So working on that change can be a really powerful motivation to see that you can you can see the impact. It takes a lot of time to change a law, but when you change it, it's such a good feeling, you know, to know that actually you have created better environment for people. But the other most the other thing that helps me really and, and motivates me and it makes it really hard to live <laughs> within 20 years is the people you work with. Like I travel a lot, I go to different places, I learn about um, uh, different environments, different legal system, different um, issues that people face. So, you know, I have traveled between Argentina and Mongolia. You know, I have been to Iraq. I have worked, you know, with the Balkans. So it has been, and I have worked with institutions in Geneva and Brussels. And, you know, the diversity you see in the field is just so amazing. And you, you just learn that there is so much you can uh, uncover. Mm -hmm. You can enrich yourself by working with different groups and just meeting wonderful people and feeling that passion about wanting to make things better is something that is really um, is really the, the thing that keeps me going a lot. Great. And can you speak about uh, what your day-to-day -day job role includes? Well, that has really changed over the years. So as I said, I started basically on a very low level, kind of basic level position of a legal, um, not, 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 not low level in negative sense, but rather like a basic startup position of being a legal advisor and learning about the field. And um, through this, so my main roles would be around reviewing legislation, writing comments to it, thinking analytically what arguments can we, can we raise to make the law better, um, another form which I really love working on is um, collecting evidence, you know, finding ways in which um, the laws can be better or how the law, law impacts our lives. So, for example, there is lots of legislation around um, counter to current terrorism, terrorism. So, you know, all the efforts to stop the terrorism in the world are really um, big, but some of these efforts are really made in a, in a way in which it makes our lives a bit more difficult. So for example, it can restrict the way you would like to transfer money to another country. So if you are a charity working with humanitarian call and trying to support, for example, refugees in Syria, sometimes because there is a worry about where the money may end up, there might be um, certain initiatives by banks or governments to prevent you from freely sending that money. So what we really are trying to find is this evidence and to say, look, you are actually doing more harm, collecting that evidence to say how that is possibly um, harmful and then trying to convince governments and big institutions like the European Union or the United Nations to actually stand up for the issue and say, no, this needs to change and needs to get better. Mm -hmm. So there is a lot of kind of negotiation and analysis and trying to uncover uh, what is going on and investigate that um, that really is another part of my job and then the third arm is really training groups what when we learn about something and when we uncover certain evidence so for example how is facial recognition used today to um, detect you when you are out on the street protesting and how will that then information be used against you for example or very rarely to help you so you know, working on this knowledge and trying to find out the, the legal regulations around this is then what we do, we take with us and we then work with different groups in countries, we train them to be able to then understand the issue, help us find the evidence and then find for better norms. So these are sort of the three kind of big chunks of, of work we are trying to do. And I also wanted to ask you, what do you think are some of the negative aspects of this job? You mentioned traveling a lot. How does that impact your day-to-day -day life? Well, yeah, I mean, you know, um, I think, you know, being, um, it, it is hard being out there on the road. And I mean, this is where you, you're most impactful when you're with the people, with the other partners working together, brainstorming, which has been really hard in the COVID situation. But um, it does require frequent travel and it does take a toll on your um family life on your actually consistency in your life like it's very hard to keep a certain plan when you know it will be continuously interrupted because you just have to go on a travel um, but I think that's also in the same time really energizing because you go you you see things you learn things and then you come back much more enriched and you have stories to tell and you have been inspired by inspired by people who are really you know dedicated to making this world a better place 
Um, but I guess the other thing, so when you work for a charity, I guess you are very much focusing on the good things in society, but also the problems in the society. And it's really hard to just sometimes shut down the computer and say, I've done my work, because you might have just read about a human rights defender being killed, or you know, I, you can read about some very progressive, rejective law of a government trying to really shut down, for example, internet of people. In we have countries where governments are shutting down the internet to prohibit grooms to come together and speak what they believe in, um, and you feel really troubled. So it's really hard to detach from your job, and I find that much more difficult than the physical exhaustion from the travel. And. What kind of personality would fit this job role? Speaking from a student perspective who may not know that this is the field for them. Yeah, I was actually thinking about that. And I think, you know, um, you're not in this job for the money, really, because it's not, you know, it's a non-profit job. So you're not there where you can profit and big financial um, uh, income for you. Of course, you always, and I think this is really important to say that for all the charity work, it, it is really important to be recognized as an important part of the society of work, and it should be rewarded and financially compensated, but it's not like working in the finance city, right? So I think what you really need to be looking at is um, what is it that we can do? How can I make this world a better place for me and my family and my children and my friends? And the community. Um, you know, what are the issues that I passionately care about and I want to see get better? What kind of legacy can I leave behind me that, you know, I can just turn back and say, you know, um, in my rocking chair when I'm really old and I can say, you know what, you can go now on the street and protest because I was working really hard with my colleagues to guarantee you that, right? Um, so it's really more about this kind of societal satisfaction issues which you get, um, get from your job. And the other thing is, um, well, really the, the, the desire to learn yourself, like you have to grow with your job. You have to want to explore all the time. You want to learn. Uh, you, will, you will need to work really hard, but then in the same time in the night, you'll have to open up papers to get on speed with the topic because you, you learn from the practice of it, but you also read from the many smart people who work with you in the field who have been exploring and trying to understand it so it's a it's that kind of a desire for continuous learning exploring and creativity that you really need to have can you illustrate one of your achievements hum um i guess you know it depends how you um how you define an achievement but I spoke, I maybe can talk about the three, three, uh, three types of achievements that I find uh, very satisfactory and I can say I have done something good in uh, my job. The first thing is when, when I spoke about the importance of empowering groups and others, you know, I think for me that's a really big achievement. So, um, you know, I used to work in Iraq with members of parliament and civil society and I used to train them on some of the issues we're working on, for example, how they can together, how can the government and the civil society come together to agree on their best modality of work so they can be partners? And how can we create a model that they can use for themselves to then work jointly rather than be in opposition? And you know, training them and then seeing them do it in practice for me, it has been it's such a rewarding experience knowing that these groups now can sit together, have the knowledge and can influence, and 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 they are the ones who make the change in their country. And you know, I can leave and feel like, yeah, you know, they are they are they're moving things forward themselves and they have the skills and they have the tools and they have the knowledge to do it. And that's a really for me a big achievement. And of course, the other one is when we make a change, like as I said before, if you we've changed, uh, you know, we have like there has been legislation in countries which have tried to limit um, groups in what they can say around a certain political issue. So, for example, if there is anything conflicting in the society um, around the elections or a lot around, for example, a climate uh, policy, when we have changed government who have tried to uh, introduce law to shut you up. That's a big success that we have been able to um, to sort of prevent from happening, and that's also a, a big, a big, very big achievement. And it really feels good when you just said that law was uh, either made progressively very well to allow you to do things or or shut down. Mm. 
actually, I have a really unanswerable question for you. Um, according to you, is policy the best way to change the world or should we be working from the bottom up from society and the individuals themselves? Well, that's a very interesting question that we are struggling with also now within the field of technology. And I think that's actually um, part of the debate which we've been having as well. You have the technological advancement, right? We all need the tools that uh, technology is bringing or the artificial intelligence. But in the same time, we are seeing that it is being used to the detriment of the society. So do we actually allow people to first experience all the effects build some knowledge and then regulate? Or do we stop for a moment, see already what's happening, anticipate and try to regulate what we may not know? Mm -hmm. But we believe we will know that this is how it will end up. And I think when these two processes go together, I think that's the most powerful thing. I think we have to see the law and the policy as a fluid, uh, as a fluidity, as a movement that has to be the, the laws and the policies would be evolving and adjusting to continuously adapt to what the society needs to protect the society, to enable the society. And the way that can be done is by listening, is by listening to what the people are saying, is by understanding what is the impact about trying to find the evidence and then building it back into the policy process. And that's a successful society for which we are actually fighting. And what we do as an organization, in fact, is we are trying to create the mechanisms which will, will enable these two dynamics to exist. And when we talk speak, I, we have to also accept that then you are speaking about citizens and individuals, but we also have other actors, for example, the companies or the banks who have a massive role uh, in, the, in our, how our societies and our policies and our experiences are shaping. Uh, are companies using uh, the technology to spy us and are they selling that information to the government? Right, we've had lots of cases around Cambridge Analytica and similar, or Facebook even now today, and uh, it's been quite obviously attacked for some of the ways it influences our opinion on certain issues. So how do we bring these actors together and how do we use regulation to anticipate, protect, but change over time to adapt to what we need? So is that answerable? That, I think that is a great answer. And finally, do you have any advice for any aspiring lawyers and uh, human rights activists <laughs> and just students in general? Um, I think for me, you know, any, if, I'm a, if I'm a student, I, I think well, looking back, right, from, from um, where I was when I was a student rather and where I am today, I think to me, uh, the most important thing would be to say, look, you, you should definitely study what you really are passionate about because you don't know where you'll end up working. And if you know that you'll have to spend four years or more, if you do master's or PhD, in sleepless nights, stress about exams, I think you really need to want it. You need, really need to want to be passionate about learning and diving deep in the field. But then once you're out, I think you should allow yourself to be challenged. Don't look at it as a trajectory, which has a path which is already determined. I'll feel, because you know, if you take me, I was a lawyer. So either a lawyer or a judge. That was the trajectory that I thought would happen. But when I was part of the university, I, I, I kind of let myself be open and not just see that as a, as, a, um, as a path, but to say, what if I try this? What if I actually go to Washington on a fellowship and learn about the field of freedom of association, freedom of protest and as of assembly and think about what I can do in this field and how can I use my skills? And I think that's the other, the other thing we need to be thinking about. How can I use my skills? How can I make myself better to apply this, this knowledge, whether it's about legal analysis, whether it's about investigative um, you know, journalism, whether it's about you know, drafting legislation or you know, public speaking to inspire people. There are different ways in which you can use your skills to advance a certain topic. And I think you should be open and in the same time, trying to advance those skills. That is a wonderful note to end on. I would also like to mention that Katerina has also created a TED Talk and I will be linking that below. So you can go watch that. <laughs> Thank you for being Thank here you. today. It's been wonderful listening to for your advice and your story about your personal career path.
And I'll see you guys next week with the career discovery sessions. Bye.